Hey friends, I'm standing in front of Levon Helms' childhood home, the shack right here. It stood just outside of Turkey Scratch, Arkansas. I came all the way to Turkey Scratch, Arkansas, so you wouldn't have to. But um, this is Levon Helms' childhood home. We drove out to Turkey Scratch and saw where it used to stand. It was moved 10 or 15 years ago to nearby Marvell. I guess this stood out in the middle of a farmer's field and it was kind of overstaying his welcome and the farmer wanted it gone. And the mayor of this town owned this property on a corner across from the city hall and the public library and agreed to donate the land to this town and they moved Levon Helm's childhood home to here. We just met a woman named Barbie who oversees the place and she told us a lot of great stuff, really nice lady. Let us inside the house and we got to look around. That's really neat that all the furniture so was all the furniture just sitting in the house? No, oh, no, okay. it was, it had been moved. Oh, okay. Um, a lot of it was at his aunt's storage, actually. And when she found out we were doing the house, she said, hey, I've got the furniture for it, you know. And so it's just cool that it came from his family and stuff. This rug right here was hand tied by his great grandmother. Wow. And usually when I say that, if there's somebody standing on it, they go. Right. <laughs> but we have it cleaned once a year at this place in Memphis. And the guy, I'm saying he's probably in like 50s. He always tells me, he says, put it, because we didn't want to put it on the floor at first. Right. He said, put it on the floor. That rug will be here long after you and wow. I are gone. <laughs> that looks great. He it said, look. it's tied so tight. Wow. It's not coming apart. That's probably worth some money. That's a lost art, I guess. Yes. They used rags, whatever they had to do it. Till they could figure out what to do with it. And then the Civic Club got it and brought it here just to try to preserve it. And we have... Good for you guys for not, not having it yeah. or saving it so much it's not now. Yes. And all the furniture and stuff in the house other than the display cases belong to his family. Oh, okay. Uh, is, it, is his family buried around here? I know he's in Woodstock. No, most no. of them are buried. His parents had left here oh, okay. and they're buried at Plus Oh. So I wonder, was it well known when when this house was out in that field that it was Levon? Mm -hmm. I mean, would people show up out yeah. there? Yeah, that might have been part, part of the problem. But it was because, uh, you know, you had people that came and they would stop at the Turkey Scratch store, which it's closed now. Yeah, but we, we were and just... they would tell them, well, that's his house right, right, right out there. Well, then they would either A, try to drive out there, <laughs> or, the they're, yes, <laughs> or they're traipsing through right, a field. Right. And when it's cotton in the field, they all wanted to pick some cotton right. and... You know, the no, farmer just kind of finally got to the point of, we got to move this. Right. I've, tr I've farmed around it all I can farm around right, it. So. Right, right, But. Appreciate you letting us in. Yeah, really. You're very welcome. We love this too. Is it work <laughs> travel down to you that there's two weirdos hanging outside? Well, of actually, uh, my office is right across oh, okay. the <laughs> road, but somebody did call me and they said, hey, you got some people at the Levon house. I said, well, I'm headed that way now. Oh, Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm going to step outside and shoot some of the stuff outside. Thank you very much for putting up with well, us. Well, you're very welcome. Like I said, I love to have visitors. <laughs> How often do you get visitors? 
about every day, actually. Really? Well, that's, that's great. great. That's to good. Hear. That's yeah. great to hear. Uh, some weeks we have multiple, but the really cool thing is getting people not from the United States. Right. You know, uh, we've had them from all over the world. It's hard to see this shack and not think about how hard and difficult his life must have been at a young age. Levon coming from living in a shack and picking cotton for a living, you know, to the great heights that he rose to and being known as one of the greatest drummers of all time and one of the greatest bands of all time. And uh, from all the stories you hear while remaining a really, really great guy, really nice guy to be around. Uh, I want to read a little bit from uh, his book, This Wheel's on Fire, where he talks about growing up in the shack. This is a great, great book, his autobiography. This is Levon Helm. He says, I was born in the house my father rented on a cotton farm in the Mississippi Delta. The Delta is a different landscape from the one you might be used to, so I want to draw you some sketches of the old-time southern farm communities I grew up in when cotton was king and rock and roll wasn't even born yet. I'm talking about a low, flat-water world of bayous, creeks, levees, and dikes, and some of the best agricultural land in the world for growing cotton, rice, and soybeans. When the first Spanish explorers arrived in the 16th century, the Delta's cypress forest sheltered Mississippi and Indian tribes, Choctaw, Chickasaw, Natchez, who constructed giant burial mounds related to astronomy and magic. I'm descended from them through my grandmother, Dolly Webb, whose own grandmother and Chickasaw blood, or had Chickasaw blood, like many of us in Phillips County. It was hard work. The temperature was usually around 100 degrees that time of year, but that's how I started out, carrying water to relieve the scorching thirst that comes from picking cotton in the heat and rich, and rich delta dust. That's Levon Helm reading from his great book, This Wheel's on Fire. I'll put a link down below if you guys want to pick it up. But um, the lady that showed us around inside said that, um, I guess Levon's family had some of the the furniture inside in storage and when they moved this over here they went ahead and gave it to them there's a lot of things that are donated inside and it's a fun trip over here we um, have been driving through the delta for a few days and have really had a good time visiting nice people really really so really nice folks uh, helping out it's a really nice lady named barbie who showed us around i mentioned her earlier she was telling a story about how levon and his sisters getting in trouble and to avoid you know whatever was coming to them they hid underneath the house here like underneath crawled under at some point the sisters were tired of it crawled out and they went ahead and got what was coming to them but Levon slept out there the entire night underneath the house and came out in the morning and went to school they came back from school thinking nobody would know any better but everybody knew what was up and he got into some big trouble she said they have a lot of people visit from all over the world. And one thing I've noticed in my travels, when you look in guest books, there's a lot of signatures from Europe. And uh, the people in Europe seem to appreciate some of this stuff more than Americans do. We slept in Clarksdale last night and um, we saw a few different European couples when we came out walking around and talking to people in the morning, looking for breakfast and all that. So there's a lot of people who appreciate the American roadside, so I hope you guys are appreciating it also. I'm curious, have you ever seen Levon Helm live? Did you ever get to meet him? Have you ever been here to this shack and visited it? I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. I don't have any coffee with me this morning. Uh, I could use a little bit of coffee and I'm a little bit groggy. So I'm gonna go find some as we make our day, way down the road. I appreciate you guys chatting with me and uh, I'll see you somewhere down the road. Much love to you.